Hey, this is Pastor Tom, and we're going to begin a summer study of Ecclesiastes this week. Let's start looking at the first chapter. Verse 1 quickly gives us some clues about the main speaker of this book. He's called the preacher three times in this chapter. I notice that it's capitalized each time in my Bible. Here we are told a few details about this preacher. He's the son of David, a king, and he rules over Israel and Jerusalem. But his name itself isn't given. Who is this preacher? Also notice that the chapter starts with someone other than the preacher speaking. Someone else says these are the words of the preacher and that the preacher says vanity of vanities. It's not until later that the preacher himself speaks in the first person. So why is this phrase says the preacher added here? Why is this other person telling us to listen to the preacher? Verse 2 uses the word vanity five times, and once more down in verse 14. This word is used frequently in this book, and as you read the whole book of Ecclesiastes this week in your Digging Deeper Challenge, circle all the times that that word is used. At this point, we don't know what he means by all is vanity, so we're going to have to watch how it's used to figure out why the preacher would make such a sweeping statement. Verse 3 asks a question. What does a man gain by all the toil at which he toils under the sun? The following verses, from verse 4 through verse 10, seem to be a poetic answer to that question. There seems to be a theme about the never-ending cycle of what happens under the sun. How do these observations answer the question from verse 3? What does a man gain by his toil? Why is the conclusion that all is vanity? Verse 12 switches to the first person, for we see the repeated use of the word I and my. Here we notice that the preacher was quite intentional to seek out answers to the meanings of life. Look at how he uses the word applied, seek, search, seen everything, acquired, great experience, know, and perceive. And we also have clues into what he concluded. Notice the words unhappy, vanity, striving after wind, vexation, and sorrow. These are despondent conclusions. And that's just the first chapter of this book. Where is all this going? Has the preacher got any of this right? Why would this be in the Bible? These are questions that we will begin to tackle this week. I'm looking forward to thinking through this fascinating book with you. God's blessings on your week.